The idea of the no-go zone, that there are parts of European towns and cities that are so dominated by ethnic minorities that white people cannot even enter, is a far-right myth that just won't die. And that's partly because even though it's patently untrue, it's constantly pushed by the mainstream media, including here in Britain. This weekend, the Daily Mail ran a story with the headline, British towns that are no-go areas for white people. Muslim author's study of mosques reveals children attacked for being white, parents making families live under Taliban-like rules, and women who can't leave home without permission. Now, when it comes to no-go zones, whichever town the Daily Mail had picked, this would have been a divisive and bullshit story. There aren't any no-go zones in Britain for white people. This article was ridiculed more than the usual piece on no-go zones because of the nature of at least one area it picked out. Blackburn, white men fear violence if they enter no-go areas. Bradford, locals fear it will become an apartheid city within 30 years. Dewsbury feels like a different country and century. And Didsbury, Sharia court within the mosque, which was once a church. Now, it was the inclusion of Didsbury um, that raised the most eyebrows. That's because it's, in fact, one of the whitest and wealthiest parts of Greater Manchester. The 2011 census showed that Didsbury West was 84.1% white and Didsbury East was 77.9% white. Um, as I've said, it's also one of the poshest. Um, so many social media users came out and, and, and said how ridiculous this was and how clearly it, how clear it was that the Orv had no idea what this place was like any idea that there is a no-go zone in this country is ridiculous but the idea that you would put this in that category even more ridiculous i used to avoid didsbury when i lived in manchester only because i couldn't afford to live there and i once ordered fish and chips in a restaurant and got eight chips piled up like jenga and the amount of fish wouldn't have filled a fish finger now i could show you a lot more comments like this from social media um, but i don't need to because debunking this story is also the daily mail itself um, this was from just three weeks ago. That's when Didsbury appeared in the paper, not as an example of Britain's no-go zones, but rather as an up-and-coming location for property buyers. So the article here reads, a posh and leafy Manchester suburb has been named as the most popular place for buyers actively looking for their new home. Didsbury, on the north bank of the River Mersey, is 4.5 miles south of Manchester's city centre. It is an attractive suburb with plenty of pubs and executive homes. It has been identified by Rightmove as the most popular local neighbourhood for buyers signing up to the property website to find out about properties for sale. Now, you really could not make this up. I mean, the purpose of that map that the Daily Mail put in their weekend newspaper was it's supposed to be this double spread. You look at that and you think, oh, the whole country's being taken over. Look at all these hot spots that we can't go to anymore because of the Muslims. Three weeks prior, they'd been saying, this is a hot spot precisely because we think you guys sh should move there. Our readers, you'll love this posh leafy suburb. So it just shows you, I think, how disingenuous, how ridiculous, how I mean, I suppose also the editorial standards here. For your paper one week to just completely contradict your paper three weeks previously, the whole thing is, of course, well, it's it's more than embarrassing. It's also incredibly racist, but it, it is embarrassing as well as being incredibly racist. On the issue of, of no-go zones more generally, as I say, anyone who's lived in a so-called no-go zone or near one knows that this is complete bullshit. But I, I want to bring up a couple more perspectives as well. My colleague Ash Sarkar um, put it well. There aren't any Muslim no-go areas in the UK, only places that the Daily Mail are confident that its readership would feel uncomfortable in because there are too many brown people walking around. One of my favourite tweets was um, a quote tweet of that tweet from Ash. So it's someone who said, I'm A4 paper white and I live and work in one of these no-go areas. If by attacked for being white, you mean the neighbours come round with a pot of biryani and samosas whenever they have a religious holiday, then yes, I've been attacked multiple times. Jason, I want to bring you in on this story. Why won't the no-go zones myth die? Well, I mean, this is, you know, based on this book by Ed Hossein called Fear and Loathing, which at the moment is, you know, being praised by the Times, but has been thoroughly debunked and kind of ripped apart by an author um, called Samir Rahim, I understand. Um, but I think at the moment it's very convenient to entrench this idea of no-go zones for white people because of the current culture war, particularly around London. I mean, I know that London doesn't quite feature in this list in terms of, you know, places which have been taken over by Islamification or whatever. But we keep on seeing, you know, these videos coming out of, you know, knife crime and people talking about, you know, Sadiq 
it caused leakages and things like that. And they're trying to really cement this idea that there are certain cities and parts of the country which are, you know, in a kind of stranglehold and have been taken over, and therefore, you know, the white majority is, you know, starting to go extinct in that sense, and you know, the minorities are really running the show there. Um, and whilst it's difficult to take seriously, you know, these myths really begin to take hold. People really do believe in this idea of, you know, white extinction. People do really believe that there are parts of the UK which they simply can't go to. And it also deflects on the fact that, you know, the billionaire owner of the Daily Mail, um, Lord Rothmere, um, owns significant portions of land in the United Kingdom. Um, 30% of land in the United Kingdom is owned by gentry and aristocracy. Um, I think the stat is that half of the land in the United Kingdom or is in England um, is owned by 1% of the country. Um, but those kinds of areas are never described as these no-go areas of places which you are kind of you know, isolated from um, because of class stratification. Everything always has to be kind of about race and racism. I mean, areas where I grew up in, you know, South London, um, where I grew up was always seen as a kind of no-go area in the Palmer Estate. Um, but now, as we've seen, we now have the kind of like Infinity Sky Pool in the Nine Elms area, which is right next to the estate where I grew up. And we have, you know, all sorts of yuppies and we have like those like tiny little chihuahua dogs and things like that going around now whereas when you know i was even those places that was kind of place where you'd be like oh no you, you can't go there i mean i remember next to the Pamela estate there used to be or it's still there there's this like newton prep primary school it's a kind of like um private school for posh um, children basically and i remember you would never see the kids kind of go beyond this like bridge because that was seen as going into the kind of like the lair of where like the ethics are where everyone is getting stabbed and places like Brixton were described that, as that as well um the ideology of white flight has always kind of you know been described um for these different areas so yeah it, it's interesting how they're you know submitting this myth around this time and I, I don't think it's without its context and as much as we can say you know Ed Hussein's book is absolute bullshit he doesn't know what he's talking about I mean I think that his um book is about an investigation of different mosques and apparently looking at, you know, um, hostility and the conclusions that he's making is basically that, you know, if Muslims can't integrate, then they should simply be deported. Um, th these are credible ideas. These are, you know, completely silly solutions to um, questions of racial integration, but they are hot topics. And um, I think it's going to be especially a hot topic around the issue of the Batley and Spen by-election, um, which is coming up as well. Um, Batley and Spen has a significant Pakistani population, a significant Muslim population. And um, I've got a friend up in Leeds who basically kind of gave me the rundown and what that place is like and he basically said that the ethnic tensions between you know white groups there and um Muslim groups there are kind of at an all-time high and even with the you know assassination of Joe Cox in 2016 I think it was or 2017 Although, you know, most of the major parties stood down for Labour, the parties there, the kind of like far right parties which stood up, it was kind of seen as almost like a referendum on Joe Cox's death to mm. say, you know, do you approve of it? And it's still, there was a sizable vote for some of these far right parties. So, yeah, I think it, it fits within the kind of broad media economy trying to look at these kind of like potential race riots and kind of like race revolutions supposedly popping up across the country. Um, whilst these are mostly mythical in the sense that there are no-go areas for white people, it is true that there are pockets in the country where actually like tensions are bubbling and we are actually going to start, you know, seeing this coming up, you know, the increase in um, revitalised far-right movement and how that's linking into culture wars at the moment and, you know, the kind of brouhaha around BLM as well. Of the responses to this story in the Daily Mail, beyond just sort of plain debunking it and saying, you know, loads of people saying I live in this place, it's clearly not a no-go zone, uh, have been people saying, look, the only reason there are no-go zones in this country is because, as you say, rents are too high because of people like Lord Rothermere hoarding the land. But I have seen a lot of other people, POC, saying, actually, there are some no-go zones in this country, but they're no-go zones for non-white people. It's when you go to areas where you think people are going to you know, look at you funny or where you're going to be more subject to racial abuse than when you're in a multicultural part of, of the country. I don't know if those, if you saw any of those comments or if you had any thoughts about um, whether or not there are no-go zones for non-white people in Britain. I mean, there absolutely are no-go zones for non-white people in Britain, but I think that something which was, you know, quite interesting was the response to the inclusion of Didsbury. As you said, you know, the kind of response was like, you know, this is a kind of like affluent area. And I read up on some of the articles that you mentioned and they were basically saying, you know, this is like wag central, like, you know, all of the kind of like Manchester footballers and their wives live here. Um, but there was no self-awareness when people were kind of saying this. It was, it was, I remember it reminded me of this kind of line that someone once wrote about the kind of difference between like remaining and Brexiteers, where Brexiteers say they're going to let all of these Turkish people into the EU and, you know, the Remainers are like, oh, no, of course we wouldn't do that. It kind of had that kind of veil of, like, liberal racism and saying that, of course, that area isn't effective with Muslims, you know, we're white there and we're affluent and we're posh. And 
those kinds of areas are no-go places for people like me, for visibly Muslim people as well. Um, they're areas where you might fear, even if not necessarily like, you know, physical racial abuse, you might fear some kind of, you know, hostility. And it, it's interesting, the area where um, the young boy, the young 14-year-old boy, I don't want to get his name wrong because I can't remember, so I'm not going to say it, um, was um, murdered in the past week. Um, would that now be described as a no-go area for Black people? Um, will we have articles basically, you know, determining different areas where um, you're more likely to experienced some kind of, you know, racist incident, because um, even the links that story has to, you know, Stephen Lawrence quite interesting, because, you know, the area of South East London uh, where Stephen Lawrence was affecting Lynch did in some ways become a no-go area for um, Black people. The BNP had set off a kind of, like, library there, which operated as offices. Um, they used to go on marches. They used to put up posters um, around St. George's Day, which had St. George slaying the dragon. And that kind of area made made it very visible that you know this is not a place where you can go and you know even like say like the bearings of the St George's Cross and things like that it, these are very visible um markers of you know no minorities here no immigrants here no black people here um you can't name parts of the country where you have that kind of like open anti-white display of hostility either in the past or now so you know it it is fragrant bullshit to suggest there are no-go white areas, but there are absolutely no-go areas for PSE.